Well, I would say the first thing that we notice when we, when we come take a look at a house is going to be the overall grading and the landscaping of it. And that's going to be, with this one, uh, it's pretty obvious they cut back into a hill and the original hill that was here. So we're going to have a lot of water and moisture coming down to the back of the house. And it also kind of makes you wonder what they did with the rest of that soil in the backfill when they brought it in. So uh, it, it would make me believe that a lot of it was probably placed up here to level out the front. So I think we're going to, you know, we, we can see that there's definitely going to be moving out of the house just looking at it initially. But I think a lot of that's going to be caused by the soil and, uh, and, this, and the scenario that the house was built in with the cutaway up the hill. So first thing we're going to notice kind of walking up to the outside is going to be uh, the cracking and everything else that's not only in the, the, uh, the stucco but also in the, the pillars. You can see we have some compression cracking here, um, some separation where this is actually settled away a little bit. Uh, this house we're actually going to see some, some settlement and heaving. Uh, just both different signs of some vertical movement that we're running into. You can see all of these pillars here kind of have similar issues uh, to where they're getting that vertical, uh, vertical movement. Things to look for in vertical movement is going to be uh, the difference between upward pressure and subsidence or settling. Uh, over here, if you can see it, we're actually getting some signs of some, some upward pressure or some heaving. And you can see that instead of having that separation cracking, we're actually getting this as it's pushing together and it's called a compression crack. So you look for the compression cracking or the separation will tell you which way the, the house is moving. So coming around to the front, uh, we see, again, some separation cracking of the porch. This is suggesting that the, the front porch is obviously going to be working its way kind of down the hill, which is making sense, again, kind of talking about when they first initially dug this house out. They probably put a lot of their backfill and their soil that they dug out of the hill uh, out to level out this front, which is going to be now loosely compacted soil, which is going to be causing this settlement. If you come around the front side of these steps, uh, you can see a lot of breaking and cracking through the overall finish work of it, and you can see quite a bit of separation, which when this was originally built would have been done uh, basically all put together. You're obviously not going to leave large cracking, so we know that this whole front part is basically working its way down the hill. Moving up to these, these columns, which if done correctly should have been put on top of caissons, uh, probably not the case in, in this situation. Uh, as we look up, there's a lot of cracking at the, at the points of these, uh, suggesting that these are also settling, obviously, along with the porch, which would uh, indicate, again, that they're not necessarily set on caissons. They're most likely just set on this, uh, this front porch slab that was put in here, which is going to be causing this whole front to, uh, to sag, and it's actually going to cause stress to the main part of the house as it pulls away from the house. Working our way around, you can actually see, again, separation cracking here between this initial column and the, uh, and the stairs here, again, indicating that it's most likely not set on a caisson, that it was just set on this slab. Um, ideally, you want to have all of your support columns and pillars set on caissons if the soils engineer is calling for caissons. In this case, it definitely was not built that way. Um, again, just some more uh, settlement, separation cracking. You can see here with these, uh, these columns here just how much the soil has basically worked away and settled away. And so that's going to be another sign that uh, the soil conditions in the area are not necessarily ideal, whether it's uh, because of loose backfill or whether it's just because we're on a hill and things are sloping away and now they added load on here. But uh, these are all just kind of signs to look for that are basically suggesting that uh, the soil conditions are not ideal and that we're going to end up experiencing some, some sort of movement with the, with the rest of the house as well. So kind of to follow up, you see where the soil set it away. These are actually be set on caissons, uh, but you can see how much the soil has dropped and you can see how much just in this column right here, this is actually settled away and you've got a pretty good size separation crack, which is causing separation in the overall ports that's, uh, that's hanging on there. So, uh, you know, the, the soil moving around right around the base of these pillars is obviously going to be a sign to look for something else. And then we come around just a little bit farther around the back and see some serious separation in the, the next column. And you can also see up at, the, up at the top of this one, which we can probably get a better shot up on the deck, but just how much damage has been done to just this overall column here 
uh, due to this movement, which again is going to be putting a lot of stress not only on the roof but on the porch and, uh, and, and the rest of the house. Uh, foundation this is set on each one of these will be set on a, a on a caisson as well um, which you know the reason that's done that is to get below this active soil region but it's obviously not they didn't do them deep enough for the they didn't get out of the active soil region to an inactive region uh, with as much movement as we're seeing but uh, it's still very much a sign of how much the soil is moving around just how much the soil has dropped away so interior on this there will actually be the center column here and there will be a caisson that's working its way all the way down uh, to whatever depths the original the soils engineer would have recommended. But, uh, but again, it, uh, it hasn't seemed to stop the movement that we're seeing. So one thing while we're outside we also generally take a look at is going to be roof lines and roof structures. You can tell if a house is settling or experiencing heaving based on a roof line if it's uneven. Uh, it's, roof movement's not always necessarily completely indicative of foundation movement. A lot of times you can have poor support or inadequate trusses in the roof uh, or the roof structure. Uh, but it definitely is a sign. So if we're seeing an uneven roof, if we're seeing a sagging roof, things like that, it's definitely a sign that there may be something else to look for as far as structural movement. So all of this that we're talking about is basically piecing together a puzzle of what's going on with the overall house. So as we see certain compression cracking, as we see certain uh, separation cracking, things like that, if all of that's in line with certain roof movement, then we can kind of start putting that puzzle together saying that, okay, we know that this side of the house or this side of the house is experiencing certain movement of a certain uh, variety and then we can go inside and see certain, you know, verify that there's also damage to the inside in those certain areas and we can make certain judgments about what's exactly going on on that side of the house. So we're in the garage now. Um, obviously first thing everybody's going to notice in a garage situation is going to be the cracking of the slab. Um, slab cracks can be a sign of certain structural issues but slab movement is not necessarily a structural problem. So again it's, it, it can be a piece of the puzzle but slabs are poured very shallow. They're poured very thin, generally four inches, and a lot of times nowadays they're not really reinforced with anything. So uh, just, you know, just because you're getting a lot of movement out of the slab doesn't necessarily indicate that you're having a lot of structural problems, but it's something to look for. And it's also something to keep an eye on is, is, is that slab movement affecting the, the foundation at all? Is the slab, has it heaved to the point where water is going to be able to work its way back towards the foundation and be causing certain problems? And, and that's, in that case, that's when we need to go in and actually do some replacement or some leveling, mud jacking, things like that. Um, as if it's going to be affecting the foundation negatively, if not even right now, down the road. Uh, but looking forward, we can definitely see some more vertical cracking in the drywall here. This is going to be a sign of, uh, of, of some heaving over here along this wall. There's actually multiple points along this wall that you can see it, which is probably indicating at certain caisson locations where we're getting this movement. And then we're also getting a pretty good sized crack right up here in the wall where, you know, we've separated, you know, an eighth to a quarter of an inch where we're seeing that vertical movement and some compression cracking up here as well. So all signs of stuff to look for in drywall, any kind of cracking, any kind of separation is all going to be signs of foundation movement and shouldn't be ignored. Uh, even small cracks are going to be indicative of some kind of movement, whether it's severe movement, whether it's movement that necessarily needs repairing. Uh, that's where you know, we come in and do an overall evaluation of the structure. But anytime you do see any kind of that uh, drywall cracking, it's going to be a sign of some sort of foundation movement. Uh, you can also see here where there's enough movement that the actual baseboard is no longer connected. It's been separated off because of how much everything has kind of moved around. Um, all signs that there's, you know, we know that this whole back wall is going to be, be moving around. So as we're kind of going in the house, you see some more slab movement here. Obviously some, uh, some definite heaving. This, this slab was actually built with a, with a rise at the edge of it to kind of meet up with the, uh, the basement floor. But you can see where the slab from the garage is actually pushed up past that and, and has risen. And again, slab movement is not necessarily a structural issue, but it's something definitely to take a look at and see if it's causing structural issues. And we can talk a little bit more once we get into the basement about basement slab issues uh, and how they can definitely affect the structure of the house. Uh, even if, uh, if it's not necessarily related to a perimeter foundation movement. So we're in the basement now. Again, kind of continuing my slab talk from the garage. One thing to kind of point out is, uh, you know, and this slab does have movement in the basement. We do see some high points and some low points pretty much all around. Uh, again, slab movement is not necessarily indicative of structural issues. However, things to look for are how are the support columns set? Are they set independently of the slab on their own foundation or are they just set on top of the slab? If they're set on top of the slab, any slab movement is going to affect that main support column, which then is affecting the structure of the house, affecting the main beam, and affecting the floors above because everything is lineal. Everything is going to be tied together. The other thing to look for is if the, if it's, if the basement is finished, if the walls are properly floated. If they're not properly floated, 
Uh, the framing then is going to be just a, as a direct result of the slab moving around that's going to be connected to the floor joist, which is then going to be affecting the main floor. So uh, slabs are typically not a structural issue. However, if, the, if the, the framing of the house and the structure of the house wasn't built correctly, it can result in structural issues and then the slab then becomes a structural problem. What we see over here, uh, this is the front of the house. Uh, you know, a lot of times inside you'll see drywall cracking, things like that. This room, we're not really seeing a whole lot of drywall cracking, but what we do see is the walls completely uneven. I'm gonna put a level up here, uh, basically showing how uneven this wall is. Uh, it's basically bowed out quite a bit, uh, starting roughly right in here. And if we try and level this out, we end up at roughly, and this is a two foot level, almost an inch of, uh, of, of, of movement there. So, you know, over the course of the wall, you're talking three, four inches that's gonna be bowed out and not level. So what's happening is as this wall is getting uh, heaving up, it's actually rotating out as well. Uh, so again, you know, when you're looking inside, you're not always going to see uh, just glaring cracks, uh, obvious signs of movement. So you got to kind of look a little bit deeper into what's exactly going on. So here's a good sign of, uh, of, of the slab issues we were talking about. You can see here, or maybe you can, hopefully you can see on the camera, there's a, uh, there's a ridge going right through the floor here where the slab is heaved up and separated. Uh, now, you know, again, slab movement's not necessarily structural, but if we go to the closest wall here, we see that there's definitely some upward compression on this wall where we're getting cracking now going all the way through the ceiling. So, uh, you know, that's going to lead me to believe that the walls are probably not properly floated, and if they are, that float may have closed up and is now causing pressure up on, those, on that framing, which is now causing pressure on the, uh, on the above floor joists, which again is going to cause problems to the upstairs and the overall structure. You can also see coming back through here um, that this wall is basically, you can see at this door, how it's basically at almost the, the, uh, the bottom of a valley if you look at it. And the reason that's going to be there is doors and windows are going to be the weakest points on a foundation. And so that's the first place we look for cracking. That's the first place you're going to see signs of movement. Uh, and what we have here based on this cracking through here is we probably have some caissons that are heaving up on either side of this door. And because this is a weak point in the foundation, it doesn't have a grade beam or doesn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't have a foundation wall holding everything in together here. You're going to get a sag between those caissons. Coming back through another room, we notice uh, right in this corner here, quite a bit of cracking and separation. Again, this is going to be a sign of vertical foundation movement. We then kind of travel up and follow this crack. It works its way across this ridge here and then also up this, uh, this vent and duct work line and we see quite a few nail pops. And, you know, people always just kind of ask me and assume that nail pops and cracking is, well, it's just, you know, normal foundation movement. Well, that's, it, 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 it can be, but, uh, but when we get to this much movement and this many cracking and this many nail pops, it's going to be a sign that the foundation has moved around probably to the point past of an allowable tolerance and that uh, they're going to need some sort of repairs. So we're up on the main floor now, and the first thing we really see that's, that's glaring to me anyways is going to be the, uh, the large crack that's running up this wall here, over the ceiling, and then back down uh, the adjoining wall. And there's also, also a high point actually here in the uh, carpet, which I'm sure you probably can't see on camera. But um, what this is saying is, is these are going to be more separation cracks. And, and, and so we, it's indicating that we know that the house is at some point separating and moving off uh, in this case, actually, both sides, but uh, sometimes you'll see those in this one side of the house is going, but uh, these are definitely caused through separation of, of a house basically working against itself and working away from itself. We can also see some, uh, some settlement cracks and some movement right up here above this main archway. Um, that's, you know, basically indicating that, again, the house is, is experiencing that vertical movement. So what that's going to say to me is that with this uh, crack going right down the middle is that each side is basically separating and we're getting some settlement out of this, out of the interior, as well as the heaving on the perimeter, and we're probably going to end up getting some more over on this side of the house as well. Working into uh, to another side room, uh, first thing I notice in here is there's a main bulge kind of in the floor, and actually looking at it, it almost runs straight up to that wall, and it, you can kind of see along the baseboard where there's a high point. Um, looking at it, this is actually above the garage, and, uh, and there's a main column that's actually set in the garage right below this. Um, so that's either saying that those garage columns were not necessarily set on independent foundations and are kind of moving along with that slab movement, or it's saying that the caissons or that the, that the pillar is set on is also heaving up, what we call a deep heave, uh, which what we're seeing around the perimeter of the house, I would assume they probably have it set on its independent caisson, and just because we're getting a lot of vertical movement out of those caissons around the perimeter, it's, uh, it's not uncommon on an interior caisson to get that same kind of movement. 
Uh, but coming through here, we're also seeing just more signs of vertical movement. Uh, you can see cracking in the walls here above the windows. Again, windows and doors are the weakest points of a foundation. It's going to be the first place to look. Uh, so we've got some cracking through this window right here, uh, indicating that vertical movement as well as just a straight vertical crack through this corner right here. Uh, and then just basically all around this room is, is really showing signs of, yeah, that separation crack that we saw in the middle is affecting this side of the house. And uh, we know that it's already affecting that side with that archway. So uh, I think it's safe to... Uh, jump to a conclusion even right off the bat before we get too, uh, too deep into this forensic uh, determination that we know that we're getting some kind of a high point in the middle and both sides are kind of separating off as well as some, uh, some internal structural issues. We're now moving into the master bath. Um, I mean, we're really just seeing large separation here in, uh, in the finish work, which is just going to be indicative of that vertical movement. Um, the floors, as we're walking through here, are very uneven. Uh, you know, just basically being brought either with the perimeter foundation movement is causing some of it, as well as the internal structural issues are causing some of that. So it's all of that vertical movement. You know, anytime you're noticing some uneven floors or cracking in the walls, that's all just going to be signs that there's some sort of movement going on with the house. So now we're now on the other side of the house from the maps master bedroom. And uh, again, kind of like we thought we'd see movement over here, we have some more cracking in the drywall, things like that. This one, we're actually seeing some cracking through the underneath this window to the point where we're getting some water intrusion. And a lot of times what you see with this vertical foundation movement is some separation in the window and you get gaps in the windows. And uh, you know, people always want to jump to the, the I'm excuse, sorry, jump to the conclusion that uh, the window is probably warped from the sun, things like that. People always say, well, we just need a new window. But it shouldn't be ignored that as you get this vertical foundation movement, you're going to get separation from the window. And it's not necessarily your window warping or things like that. Um, as we see this separation through here, which uh, I'm sure you can get a close shot of, um, that's where this water intrusion is going to be. So there was probably some cracking through here that eventually got wet, which is peeling off this, uh, the paint and everything else. So uh, again, all signs of this vertical foundation movement that this whole house is experiencing. So another thing we see on here on the outside is a lot of cracking in the wall, a lot of crack, cracking in the, uh, in the stucco. And, you know, a lot of times this is going to be definitely related to the cracking we see on the inside. And some of the cracks we just saw on the inside in these bedrooms uh, are directly on the other side of these cracks out here. This window right here is the one that was leaking. And you can just see how many cracks are kind of in and around this. So uh, all of it is linked. Anywhere we're seeing cracking on the inside, we're seeing cracking on the outside. It's all based on that foundation movement that we're seeing. So it's all, everything in this is all going to be intertwined. You can actually see, similar to that window, you can see separation here with the door. It wouldn't surprise me at some point if there's going to be some water intrusion here. We're actually getting some outward pressure and some vertical pressure on this wall right here, which again, I wouldn't surprise me if at some point there's going to be some water intrusion coming in there.